This is Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Now from the Collins Aerospace Studio at the Nordloff Center in downtown Rockford, here's your host, Eric Wilson. Welcome to the first weekend of May. We're only a couple of games away from our championship game. Both of these teams hope to get to that championship, but only one will make it after today. Let's welcome those two teams, shall we? First, a nice round of applause for the Belvedere North Blue Thunder. <laughs> Belvedere North comes here pretty much with a balanced attack every game. Back to back to back correct answers in the final challenge in the last game. Put them on top of Hananiga, 280 to 230. That is why they are here. Probably a lot closer than you would have liked. Spencer, introduce us to your starting lineup. Uh, I'm Spencer. To my left is Scotty. To my right is James. And to my far right is Billy. Welcome, Belvedere North Blue Thunder, facing off against the Keith Country Day Cougars. How about a round of applause for them? <laughs> Speaking of a lot closer than you would have liked, Eleanor and the rest of the team, you remember your last game, right? Very last question against Winnebago. That's what put you here. Broke the tie, landed in this game. That had to feel good. It would be nice to keep the game for us as close, but maybe not for our contestants as close. Eleanor, introduce us to your starting lineup. Hi, I'm Eleanor. I'm the captain of the Keith Country Day School Quiz Bowl team, and my team members will introduce themselves from my left to my right. I'm Billy. I'm Ryan. I'm Nongba. Welcome to the Keith Country Day Cougars. A little bit of history about these two teams. Um, it's only the second time that the Blue Thunder and the Cougars have faced each other. Both are looking for a return to the finale. The Blue Thunder were there a year ago, and Keith was there in season four. So it would be sweet for either team to move on. We'll see what happens after we ask a bunch of questions or after I ask a bunch of questions, you provide a lot of answers. We expect a lot of answers too. In our buzz-in round, that's how we start. So you've played this game long enough, you know the rules, the two most important ones. Wait for me to call your name and say your answer loudly and clearly. Good luck both teams and here comes our first question. What building designed by Ictinus and Callicrates includes a frieze depicting a procession and is a temple on the Acropolis dedicated Billy. Parthenon? Yes, dedicated to Athena. You didn't even need that Athena clue. Keith's first on the board this game. Trojan asteroids are found in the orbit of what planet whose moons include Amalthea and Callisto? And Ryan. Jupiter. Yes, it is the fifth planet from the sun. We go from Greek mythology to a Roman reference. Keith's got two in a row. What most expensive yellow Monopoly property, the only one outside Atlantic City, is a misspelled neighborhood between Margate City and Ventnor City? Spencer. Marvin Gardens? That is correct. The neighborhood is actually supposed to be spelled M-A-R-V-E-N, but on the game it's M-A-R-V-I-N, and those are Belvedere North's first points of the game. What city was ruled by the Aegeids and Euripondids, attributed its laws to Lycurgus, fought Persia under Leoninus, and was a martial rival, Spencer. Sparta. Of Athens, you've got it, those are your 10. I apologize for stumbling through that one, but you didn't need that, you knew it anyway. What Duchess of Aquitaine was the mother of Richard the Lionheart, Eleanor? Eleanor of Aquitaine. That is correct, and it's so appropriate you would answer that, right? Married to both Louis VII and Henry II. He's on top now. What novella criticized as racist by Chinua Achebe's essay in Image of Africa describes Eleanor? Heart of Darkness. Yes, describes Marlowe's trip to find Mr. Kurtz. It is by Joseph Conrad, also the inspiration for the film Apocalypse Now. Inhaling fibers of what silicate material can cause mesothelioma? Scotty. Asbestos. Yes, leading to a ban on its use in building insulation due to lung health hazards. The poet Emily Dickinson is known as the belle of what town, James? Amherst. Yes, what town in Massachusetts where she was born. That's also where the Emily Dickinson Museum is. Our game's tied now. What group, which in 2021 announced plans to reincorporate in Texas after filing for bankruptcy, has the mascot Eddie Eagle and promotes gun rights? Billy on Keith. And I right. That is correct. Keith's now on top. What term refers to garden plants that, unlike perennials, have a life cycle that concludes, Spencer? Annuals? Yes, concludes after one growing season. Or if you're in our family, that's basically a few weeks. What river 
which is the world's deepest, flows past Brazzaville and, Kin and Kinshasa, the capitals of two namesake countries. James. Niger. Incorrect. I will finish for Keith. The capitals of two namesake countries in Central Africa. Billy and Keith. Congo. Yes, the Congo River. Used to be known as the Zaire River. In what naval battle, which took place near Put-in Bay, were British forces under Robert Barclay defeated by Oliver Hazard James? The Battle of Lake Erie? Yes, Oliver Hazard Perry in the War of 1812. Back to a tie. What man, the namesake of Hugo Chavez's revolution, served as president of Gran Colombia from 18... Scotty. Bolivar? Yes, from 1819 to 1830 and was called The Liberator. North's on top now. What news channel, whose closure was unsuccessfully demanded during a 2017 diplomatic crisis, has a name meaning the island and is based in Qatar? Billy on Belvedere North. Al Jazeera. That is right. Those are your points. What structures, which connect bones to other bones, include a commonly injured anterior cruciate, Spencer? Ligament? Yes, anterior cruciate, one in the knee, and are contrasted with tendons. That's how we end the round with, looks like four in a row from Belvedere North. That puts them on top with 90 points. Keith not very far behind at 60, and we got a lot of game to play too. Our next round is called Volleyball, and it is right after this. One round in, Belvedere is on top, Belvedere North is on top by three questions. They have 90 points, Keith Country Day has 60. We'll get into our volleyball in just a second, but a very special thank you to our judge today, Linda Green, who is an IHSA Scholastic Bowl Hall of Fame coach. Uh, she's been a judge here off and on for quite a few seasons here at Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl, and we appreciate your help and your expertise. Thanks, Linda. All right, volleyball contestants, you can work as a team, but all the answers have to come from the captains because of the coin flip. Uh, Eleanor, you and the Cougars will get our first question this week. Are you ready? Okay, here it comes. Good luck, both teams. What author wrote about a plot to steal the inheritance of Valentine Villefort that is foiled by Edmond Dantes in the novel The Count of Monte Cristo? Dumas. Dumas is right, and you've got the first points of this round. Nice work. We're over to Belvedere North. Here's your first one, Spencer. What circuit element is symbolized by a coil on circuit diagrams and generates a magnetic field when current passes through it. Diode? Incorrect. An inductor. That was kind of a tough electrical engineering question. Let's go back over to Keith. What surname shared by the president of Nintendo of America and the mayor of Washington, D.C., names the leader of the Koopas and archenemy of Mario? Bowser. That's correct, and believe it or not, it's just a coincidence that Doug Bowser, who runs Nintendo, shares a name with King Koopa. We're back over to North now. The traditional date of Jesus' death is during the reign of what Roman emperor who succeeded Augustus and who was succeeded by Caligula? Tiberius? No, it's the one before him. No, it's Tiberius. Tiberius. Oh, Tiberius? You got it, right before the buzzer. Also, Captain Kirk's middle name. We're back over to Keith now. What explorer was a cartographer for Pierre Dugas Dumont, founded the colony of Quebec, and is the namesake of a lake between New York and Vermont? Champlain. Uh, Champlain. Judge, can we take that? Yep, you got it. Those are your points. We're back over to Belvedere North. In tennis, what term, which may come from the French word for egg, refers to a score of zero? Love? Yes. Sounds like that was a team effort with that answer. The French for egg is aloof. And we're back to Keith. What artist who showed a Disney character fishing in Look Mickey made use of bende dots in paintings inspired by comic books, such as Wham? Roy Fox Lichtenstein. Belvedere North, here's another one for you. In what phase of mitosis do kinetochore microtubules contract to move sister chromatids to opposite sides of a cell? Anaphase? Yes, you got it. There are five to choose from, and you got the right one. Those are yours. Back to Keith. What city, which was nicknamed Cottonopolis in the 19th century, lies east of Liverpool and is home to a namesake United football club? 
Manchester? Yes. You didn't, didn't even seem like you needed that football club clue. You got that one pretty quickly. We're back to North. What author warned of the tyranny of the majority in his book, Democracy in America? All I could think was Madison. Madison? Incorrect. Alexi de Tocqueville. No points on that last one, and that's how we end the round. We're out of time. Now it's only a 20 point swing, so Keith closed that gap a little bit. Belvedere North has 120. Keith, ha or, I'm sorry, yeah, Belvedere North has 120. Keith has 100. We'll take a break, but you get a chance to play at home during this break with the Bergstrom bonus question, and we'll come back with the answer in about two minutes. Run at the iconic Churchill Downs, the Kentucky Derby was first held on May 17, 1875, in which city? Half time and we have a close game. Only two questions basically separating our two teams. Belvedere North has 120. Keith has 100. Before we get to more questions worth points, here's what some people might argue is the most important question of the game. The Bergstrom bonus question for pizza and pasta from Lino's of Rockford. Hands on your buzzers, contestants. Let me know if you know the answer to this. The Kentucky Derby was first held on May 17th, 1875 in which city? Scotty. Louisville. That is correct. You got it. Kind of a trick there. Uh, and past derby winners, a fun fact, past derby winner names have been started by all but three letters in the alphabet, Q, X, and Y. Interesting. All right, enjoy your pizza, Scotty. I enjoy these next two minutes if you're watching at home. A little quick break, and then we'll come back with the Nika IBEW lightning round. Just found out it's a really good thing that Scotty got that question correct. His mom is from Louisville, right, Scotty? Nice job with that Bergstrom bonus question. Let's get to some questions now worth those points that I mentioned. It's the Nika IBEW lightning round. We call it lightning because it moves fast. Plus, there's a lot of points available. And Belvedere North, you get first choice this week. So, Spencer, the three categories are British novelists, grammar, and civic holidays and observances. Civic holidays and observances? You got it. In what calendar month do these U.S. observances and occasions fall? Answers can repeat, just to keep that in mind. In what calendar month do these observances and occasions fall? You'll have a minute to run the category. If you do, you get 100 points. If not, whatever's left, Eleanor, you'll have 30 seconds to clean up. Here comes your first one, Spencer. In what calendar month do these U.S. observances and occasions fall? Labor Day. September. September. Correct. Groundhog Day. February. February. Correct. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. January. January. Correct. Indigenous Peoples Day, a modern October. substitute. October. For Columbus Day. Correct. Mother's Day. May. May. Correct. Flag Day. June. 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 Correct. Tax Day. April. Correct. Patriot Day, which does not commemorate the American Revolution. Pass. 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 Law Day which is Labor Day in most non-U.S. countries. May. Correct. Arbor Day. April. Correct. Patriot Day, which does not commemorate the American Revolution. November. Incorrect. That was the only one left to go back to. Nine out of ten. Not bad. Eleanor, you've got 30 seconds. If you're paying attention, you may not need all 30 seconds. This is the only one left. Um, take all the time if you need it or answer and we can move on. Here we go. In what calendar month do these U.S. observances and occasions fall? Patriot Day, which does not commemorate the American Revolution. Uh, July. Incorrect. September. It is a day to remember what happened on 9-11. There is a Patriot Day, which is the third Monday in April. Patriot Day, though, is what we needed there. So only one question left on the board for that one. Now, Eleanor, you have a chance to get pretty close as well. As you run this category, you'll within, be within 10, and there's two left. British novelist or grammar? Uh, British novelist, please. Okay, it's yours. Name the British authors who wrote these novels. So I will name the novel, you name the British author. Same rules apply to both teams. 60 seconds is on the clock. Are you ready for your first one, Eleanor? 
Name the British authors who wrote these novels. Animal Farm. Orwell. Correct. A Study in Scarlet and the Sign of Four. Conan Doyle. Correct. Northanger Abbey and Mansfield Park. Austin. Correct. Far from the Madding Crowd and Jude the Obscurer. Hardy. Correct. Maul Flanders. Pass. Never Let Me Go and Remains of the Day. Pass. Adam Bede and Daniel Deronda. Dickens. Incorrect. The Old Curiosity Shop. Dickens. Correct. The Quiet American and the Power and the Glory. Pass. Vile Bodies and Brideshead Revisited. Wall. Correct. Maul Flanders. Defoe. Correct. Never Let Me Go and Remains of the Day. And that's our time. That was a pretty solid lightning round as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's six, right? Wait, no, seven. Um, so there's only three left for you, Spencer. Um, and you'll have 30 seconds for them if you want to take all the time. Um, if not, answer and we'll move on. Are you ready for your first one? Name the British authors who wrote these novels. Never Let Me Go and Remains of the Day. Wolf. Incorrect. Adam Bede and Daniel Deronda. Wolf. Incorrect. The Quiet American and the Power and the Glory. Wolf. <laughs> Threw out the three wolves just in case. Um, it was not the answer for any of them. Never Let Me Go and Remains of the Day was Kazuo Ishiguro. Actually won the 2017 Nobel Prize for Literature. Adam Bede and Daniel Deronda was George Eliot, pen name for Marianne Evans. And The Quiet American, The Power and the Glory, Graham Greene. All right, so we've got one round left to play, and there is only 40 points between our teams. In the next round, that's basically two questions, because each of our questions is worth 20 points. And our Mercy Health final challenge is next. All right, it all comes down to this. One round left to earn a spot in our championship game. Belvedere North has 210 points right now. Keith Country Day has 170. Mercy Health final challenge, same rules as round one, other than the points now being worth 20, or questions being worth 20 points each. Um, and the two most important rules, of course, wait for me to call your name, say your answer loudly and clearly. Again, especially with a game this close. It's only a 40 point swing right now. Hands on your buzzers. Good luck to our teams. Here we go. Cape Hatteras and Atlantis are sections in what long poem by Hart Crane, whose title alludes to a New York City landmark? Scotty. Statue of Liberty. Incorrect. Keith, you could take these points. Eleanor. Empire State Building. Incorrect. The Bridge is the title, and it references the Brooklyn Bridge. What creature that sleeps beneath the upper deep in an Alfred Lord Tennyson poem? James. Kraken? Yes, a squid-like sea monster after which Seattle's NHL team is named. Belvedere North is first in this round with points. In 1848, Joseph Jenkins Roberts became the first president of what country, which was partly settled by the American colonization, Spencer? Liberia. Yes, the American Colonization Society. Two in a row. What author of the picture book Crazy Hair wrote about a girl who resists having buttons sewn onto her eyes by the evil other mother in Coraline? But it is a terrifying children's book written by Neil Gaiman. No points. New question. What property of equality states that if A equals B, then B equals A? Eleanor. Symmetric. Yes, symmetric. Those are your first points of the round. The Treaty of Ferenaguin ended what, ended what war in which British armies under Lord Roberts and Lord Kirchner seized control of much of modern South Africa? Eleanor. The Zulu Wars? Incorrect. Belvedere North, you could answer this question. Go ahead, Spencer. The Boer Wars? The Boer Wars, that is right. And those are yours. Jess Day. 
Jess Day moves into a loft with three male roommates on what Fox sitcom that starred Spencer? New Girl? Yes, yeah, starred Zoe Deschanel. What Secretary of State, who used shuttle diplomacy between Egypt and Israel to end the Yom Kippur War, served under Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford? Scotty. Kissinger? Yes, that was Henry Kissinger, right before the buzzer. What river, whose headwaters are at the Sengi Zangbo, or Lion's Spring, flowed past the ancient city of Mohenjo-Dara and is... Spencer. The Indus. Yes, the longest in Pakistan. Peter and Lara Jean pretend to date each other in what young adult romance by Jenny Han that was followed by Eleanor. To all the boys I've loved before? Yes, followed by a sequel titled P.S. I Still Love You. During what calendar period in which dates are often consumed in the iftar meal do Muslims abstain from drinking and nangba? Ramadan? Yes, eat, drinking and eating during the day. And that was the last question of the round. 100 by 100 points, Belvedere North is moving on. You are headed to the championship game. See a little bit of relief in James's eyes. Nice job to uh, both of our teams, actually, but certainly nice job for you. You're back into the championship round. You face Auburn. Um, it's not goodbye, Keith, because you move on to our consolation game in a couple of weeks as well. So uh, we will see you again very soon. And we hope to see you next week for our next game, which is the All-Star. Scotty will make an appearance in that as well. Um, that's our next weekend on Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. See you then.